I would like to welcome you to creating sacred space in our lives. I am Tripp Martin, the pastor of Auburn First Baptist Church in Auburn, Alabama, there at the corner of College and Glen. And as we have been walking with Jesus through the days of Lent, along that path from Ash Wednesday to Easter morning, we have been thinking about those different titles for Jesus that we find throughout Scripture. We have been leaning on the work of Diana Butler Bass, thinking about Jesus as friend, teacher, Savior, Lord, way, and presence. And along that path, we will find ourselves at Calvary, where we ponder the meaning of Jesus' death and the depths of the forgiveness of God. And we will be surprised by new life on Easter morning, seeing yet again that God's love is stronger than death. And perhaps the title that is most well-known for Jesus is that of Savior. The main question that we find throughout the Gospels as it is presented to people throughout the Gospels and to us as the reader is the question, who is Jesus? We find the answer to that question in Jesus' words and actions. We also find it in the broader words of Scripture as the Gospels refer back to the prophets. We're in the Gospel of Luke. The prophet Isaiah is quoted where Jesus reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It is one of those answers to the question, who is Jesus? And we see him live into those words where he is feeding the 5,000 or healing the sick or calming the storm. It is indicative of what Jesus means by the kingdom of God has come near. That Jesus is tending to the most vulnerable. Caring for people where they are in need. That we find people throughout the stories of scripture like Nicodemus seeking Jesus out at night wanting to know who he is, or John the Baptist, who has been waiting for the Messiah and ask, are you the one we have been waiting on? There's Pontius Pilate who says, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus gives that very vague, mysterious answer. And it's why throughout the Gospel of John, we read all of those I am sayings where those words, I am, are reminiscent of the answer that God gives Moses at the burning bush when Moses asks, who are you, God? And Jesus says, I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. But all of these answers speak to what we mean when we say Jesus is Savior. It is that Jewish hope for a Messiah, the one who would come and restore Israel, who would restore the covenant that God made with Israel, that covenant that says, I am your God and you are my people and I will bless all nations through you that the word Christ is the Greek translation for the Hebrew word Messiah. So it's not Jesus' last name, as in Jesus the Christ. It means that Jesus fulfills that hope for salvation.
And salvation is a deep and wide way to express God's hope for this world. What Jesus means by the kingdom of God. It is God's hope where all wrongs are made right, where all brokenness is healed, and where all death is powerless over this world. Those who were with Jesus the most did not fully understand all of this. It was part of that journey and walking with him and learning from him that those closest to him were constantly broadening and deepening their understanding of it, and those further from him just misunderstood it. They said, look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Even though the title Savior is the most well-known, perhaps we are still coming to understand what it means like those who first knew Jesus. In fact, it is a well-known title, but it only occurs twice in the Gospels. Once in the Gospel of Luke, where in the second chapter it says, Do not be afraid. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And then elsewhere in the Gospel of John, where A Samaritan woman says, this is truly the Savior of the world. That other titles, like teacher, are used far more frequently. But we are thinking about the title Savior. Diana Butler Bass says that her first memory of Jesus as Savior is surprisingly from uh, another source outside of Scripture that classic show that we see once a year, A Charlie Brown Christmas. It first aired in 1965. She was six years old at the time. And throughout this show, everyone is trying to understand the true meaning of Christmas, even misunderstanding it, until out of Charlie Brown's frustration, Linus recites the verses from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 2, for unto you this is born this day in the city of David a Savior. And it begs the question, what are we saved from? Are we saved from evil? From death? From sin? From ourselves? There are many ways to talk about it. And it has been defined in many ways throughout the history of the church, where at different points, there was a different emphasis on what we were saved from. Are we saved from breaking the Ten Commandments? Or from taking a wayward path from dissolute living as we read in the story of the prodigal son? Are we saved from the temptation of a particular sin, where at times that sin has been dancing or gambling or some other issue of morality. And it's there that we must be careful. We never reduce the meaning of salvation, of what we mean when we say Jesus is Savior. That what the kingdom of God means, what Jesus means when he says that phrase, is much bigger than anything we might reduce it to. It refers to the hatred, the war, the innocent suffering we find in this world. It means sickness and poverty, careless speech, slander, or manipulation. It means oppression, grief, and loneliness. It is everything that destroys God's good creation. It is death and the pain that it causes, the void that it leaves, and the adjustment it requires. That salvation 
is about redeeming every loss, reminding us that the last word belongs to God and that the last word is a word of grace. That we want a deep and wide understanding of what we mean by Jesus as Savior. That the cross should ho hold the widest and deepest meaning possible. Like in Romans 8 where it says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That we are conquerors through him who loved us, that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth or anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, that that speaks to Jesus as Savior. It says that there is more love in God than there is sin in us. We've tried to explain what the cross means in many ways, theories and explanations, which I'm not sure fully encompass what we mean when we say Jesus is Savior. It is a love so wide and deep that it eludes our explanations. But it does mean that any time we face death, and death can come in many different ways. It might be the loss of innocence or the loss of a loved one the loss of our compass or direction in life, the loss of a job, the loss of our health, the loss of creation, the loss of companionship or of community, that any time we face any kind of death, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That brings us hope, comfort, and strength. And it brings us those things in the face of our own death, which we do not like to discuss. It's even hard to discuss that with those closest to us. Even when that day approaches, we don't want to talk about our last wishes or what the funeral will look like. We don't want to talk about our fear or peace that we feel in the face of death. But that day will come for us all. And the church is called to help us live well and to die well. And we find such comfort and guidance for all of these things in a deeper and wider understanding of Jesus as Savior. That there is nothing in death or in life, not angels or rulers, things present, things to come, nor anything else in all creation that can separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for the love that we find in Jesus and for the hope of salvation where all wrongs are made right, where all brokenness is eventually healed, where all sins are forgiven and where all of creation is redeemed. May we find strength and comfort 
and knowing those things. Amen. If you would like to know more about Auburn First Baptist Church, that can be found at auburnfbc.org.